morbidly bewitched. In the last episode, I discussed burials at sea. And in this episode, I'm going to be talking about cryogenics. <laughs> The whole idea was founded by a Robert Ettinger in 1962, who became absolutely fascinated with the different possibilities of preservation in organic matter through the process of freezing. This then grew into a belief system amongst the science community that if the correct techniques were put in place and the correct solutions were used, there is a possibility to reanimate a suspended patient years down the line whenever medical techniques have advanced and the ailment that actually caused their passing and the damage caused by the cryonics itself could be reversed and they could be brought back to life. My wee woman decided to join the show. Isn't that right darling? When I talk about advancements in the medical industry I mean things like nano robots and microscopic levels that can actually go into the system, repair the damage that was caused by the cryonics process and actually heal the ailment that the person died from. Alcor in Arizona is the largest facility out of the four known at the minute and it boasts over 135 patients since its opening in 1972. But what's involved? It's not just as simple as picking up a dead body or a patient and throwing them into an oversized freezer. Oh no no, it's far more complex than that. It's a whole operation called vitrification. Let's go through this in stages. First of all, if you are signed up to the program, you will have a group of people from that institute on standby when you are at your worst and you know that the end is coming so that their response time can be as fast as possible. What they believe is that whenever someone passes away, it's not instantaneous death. They believe that it's a quite a long... Sorry, an Amazon package arrived. Where were we? Yes, so they believe it's actually quite a long process when someone dies before the entire system is classed as clinically dead, not just legally dead. And it's getting the body in this space of time to stabilize them that's the most important part. The stabilization of the body is when they are brought in, they are manually cooled down with things like ice packs, and they are put onto something I can only best describe as a life support machine, which manually pumps the heart to keep everything moving around the circulatory system, prepping the body for the vitrification, which is the next phase. The patient is then taken into the operating room where they are going to be seen to by two fully trained surgeons. These surgeons then carry out a thoracotomy. That's basically where the whole chest cavity is opened up to allow them access to the heart. On standby is two fully trained cryogenicists as well. Once the heart is located, tubing is inserted into the main valves of the heart to use the human body's own plumbing system to first of all flush out all fluid as much as possible from the entire body. Remember we're about 60 to 70 percent water and that has to be drained to the best of their ability if this is going to work. After they've flushed out as much fluid as possible, then it's time for the vitrification fluid to be put in its place. This is a combination of different cryoprotectants which will stop cells being damaged during the freezing process. Cryoprotectants are a medical grade antifreeze. It's designed to stop the crystallization of the fluid in each cell, which is what causes the damage once it goes into that lower temperature. The best example of damage that's caused during the freezing process to the human body when it's alive is frostbite. When you see climbers coming down from the likes of Everest and they've maybe lost fingers and toes to frostbite, it's because the water retained inside the tissue has become frozen and then it fractures, which completely destroys the cells and the cells then die. 
This is why it's so important in the first phase to try and remove as much excess water from the body as possible. The body is then lowered head first into a doer or doer or what? Doer? 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 Yeah. It's one of those big steel drums that you would associate with cryogenics. And the reason they're head first is because if there's any kind of leak in the tank, that's the main part that they want to protect. They are submerged in liquid nitrogen and over the course of one to two weeks, this temperature is slowly lowered to a minus 196 degrees Celsius, where they will then remain in suspended animation until their reanimation, years down the line. One dyer can hold between four to six full human remains, or patients, and four to six neuro patients. Hmm. Yes, if full body suspension seems a little bit pricey for you, approximately $200,000, then you can opt for the cut price option, no pun intended, and just have your head frozen for $80,000. There is just one small tiny catch to the cryogenics process. They haven't quite figured out the reanimation side just yet. Mm. You see, they've put an awful lot of thought into the process of the vitrification to protect every single cell they can to then submerge the body in the liquid nitrogen. However, there is just as much damage occurs to organic cells when you heat them up from such a low temperature. Essentially, it's reverse of the same process. So cells can still fracture and explode and completely disintegrate. Which will then turn those neuro patients into little mushy patients. Yeah, so I'm just about to leave. Um, this is the reanimation day of uh, my great, great, great uncle Jimmy. So pretty excited. Yeah, so I'm just at the lab here. Uh, they're about to open the um, canister here. Here he comes. Oh, oh, oh my God, Uncle Jimmy. And yes, you can also have your little furry friend put into a state of cryonics as well. There are a few pets and heads of pets currently with some of the institutes of their owners. Whether you believe in it, whether you don't believe in it, whether it seems too crazy and far-fetched and out there, I will leave that lovely debate for you to decide. However, I suppose, I mean, at the end of the day, it's not really harming anybody. It is very expensive, but for people that have a deep-seated fear of just ceasing to exist, it's um, quite a nice idea, really. I kind of like it. Hmm. And yes, the laboratory itself is treated similar to a cemetery. If you have a loved one who's opted for cryogenics, you can go and visit them and go and pet the tank. So there's your little slice of information, your little frozen piece of the pie on cryogenics. Join me in my next video when I'm going to be talking about aquamation. Please subscribe and I'll see you soon.